Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Nahmaduhu wa nusabbihuhu wa nuqaddisuhu ala alaihi wa na'amaihi wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa nashhadu anna sayyidana Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu arsalahu bil huda wa din al haqq li yudhhirahu ala al din kullih Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa tarham ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad ka afdhali ma sallayta wa sallamt wa barakta wa tarhamta ala Ibrahim wa ali Ibrahim fil alamin innaka hamidun majid wa salli allahumma wa sallim ala jami' al anbiya wal mursalin wal awsiya wal siddiqin wa itrat nabiyyika at tayyibin at tahirin al ma'sumin wal khullas man ashabihi al muntajibin wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan wa iman ila yawm al din ibad allah usikum wa usi nafsi بتقوى الله ولزوم امره بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس انتم الفقراء الى الله والله هو الغني الحميد scholars contend that god provides and sustains the entire universe through al fayd al ilahi the maxim the theory of the divine grace, al faydul ilahi, the divine emanation. And that divine grace sustains not only the humans, but everything in this universe. Every existence in this universe is being supported and sustained and provided for by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if this grace and faith to come to a halt then that would render the entire universe crippled and incapacitated god says you are the one ayyuhannas o mankind you are the one who need your lord antumul fuqara'u ilallah faqir is the one who's in need sometimes in financial needs sometimes emotional needs Emotional support. Antum al fuqara'u ilallah. Whereas God, Wallahu huwa al ghani. He is free of all needs. Huwa al ghani al hamid. We need Allah in every moment of our life, every second of our life. We need Him. We cannot afford. You may need no one, including your family. But when it comes to God, no one can afford not needing God, not needing His grace and His faith and His help. Every ni'mah you are enjoying, every blessings you have in your life is from God. And man is weak. God created man to be weak. No matter how powerful, influential, rich, healthy he is, he's still weak. He needs God. What is the difference between God's power and our power? Man's power. There are three main differences. The first difference is that God's power is original, the originality of God's power. It, does, it is not derived from others, other sources. Whereas our energy, our strength, our power is derived from others, from God, not from ourselves. It's not original. We are born very weak. We live our life very weak. A small virus, microscopic Virus can knock us down and you cannot move your hand, your arm. Small virus that you cannot even see. When it goes inside your body, it knocks you down. Man is weak. Whereas God's power is original, is original. It's by Him 
Nobody has bestowed this power and this energy of God. Allah huwa al-qawi, huwa al-qawi al-aziz. He is the real powerful. We sometimes, a moment comes to us that we are very weak, very fragmented. We cannot move, we cannot talk. We cannot even think. Our health is being compromised. So this is number one. The second difference between God's power and man's power is that God is self-sufficient. Our power comes from food. How did you make it today to this place? You had to have a breakfast. Last night you had to have dinner. The day before you had to have lunch. If you don't eat, you don't have energy. You cannot walk. You must sustain yourself through food in order for you to get energy. Whereas God's energy is not from food, not from drink, not from sleep, not from nutrition. God's energy is self-sufficient, self-subsisting. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. Al-hay is the living, al-qayyum is self-subsisting. Nobody is subsisting him. Allah Ta'ala qa'imun bidatih, whereas us, man, qa'imun bighayrih. We are standing by our other things. If we are standing, this standing of us is made through others, not through ourselves. Through our parents, through our money, through the food that we eat, we can stand. Whereas God's Power and energy is made by Him. Qa'imun bidatih. The only thing in this universe that is qa'imun bidatih, standing alone by Himself, self subsisting. Qayyum. Self subsisting. Does not need to get energy from anyone else. And this is the most important characteristics of God. God has many characteristics, all of them are important, many attributes, all of them are unique. But this one, this one in particular, self-sufficiency, is the most important. When we discuss the identity of God with other religions, this subject is brought up, this important subject. Why Jesus cannot be the Lord? For a simple fact, simple and a small fact. Jesus is not self-sufficient. Jesus is not self-sufficient. Jesus he used to eat drink, sleep, rest. He needed to take a break. He needed to take medicine. He would heal. He would heal the sick, but he, he gets sick himself and he needed to get medicine. He's not self-sufficient. So he cannot be God. He cannot be the Lord. Someone who cannot be self-sufficient cannot be the Lord. The only self-sufficient in this universe is God. Rani. Ghani, the meaning of Ghani is self-sufficient. Even the richest people today is not self-sufficient. Can he be self-sufficient? Let him have billions of dollars in his bank account. He's not self-sufficient. He needs others around him. If he does not have others around him, he cannot sustain himself. He cannot be rich. He became rich because he has thousands of people who are helping him, helping his business out. God does not need help from anyone. Antum al ila Allah. You are in need of God. Wallahu huwa al hamid. Allahumma, this is the dua, the best duas, my friends. After the salat, before the salat. Allahumma mnun bighinaka ala faqri. O God, bestow through your richness on my poverty. I am poor. The Sufis, they have beautiful expression they they introduce themselves as what faqir faqir i am in need even if he's rich financially very rich at the end of the day he's faqir he is poor he needs god's help and god's sustenance and god's guidance and god's protection allahumma mnun bighinaka ala faqri wa bihilmika your forbearance, ala jahli on my ignorance. Wa biquwatika, your energy, your strength, ala dha'fi. I am weak. I am very weak. 
we become physically weak, psychologically weak, mentally weak, spiritually weak, we are weak. We need God's help. So that is the second difference between God's power and a human's power. God is self-sufficient, whereas us, we are in constant need. And the third, my friends, the only independent and sovereign entity in this universe is God. We are not independent. We are dependent, not independent. If you think one day you are now independent, you have the means of living, you don't need anyone, you are wrong, you are mistaken. The only entity in this universe that is truly independent, independent and sovereign, sovereign, siyada, has sovereignty, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, one question before the end of the first khutbah. If God is self-sufficient, if God is the source of blessings, if God is the means of al faydhul ilahi, the divine grace, divine emanation, why then we ask, O oh Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, help. Ya Ali Madad, Ya Hussein, Ya Musa, Ya Isa, Ya Ibrahim. Important question. Shouldn't we ask God? God is the source. Those Imams and the Prophets, they are servants of God. They are slaves of God. They themselves need God. They need Him. They are not self-sufficient. In fact, we ask them because they are not because they are the source of sustenance, but they are means, the gates. God says, I want you to come to me through certain gates. Abwab, the prophets and the imams are the gates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why in this book, this book, the Holy Quran tells us that if you want to reach God, go through these gates. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا Chapter 4 وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهِ When they wrong themselves, they have a problem, they come to you, Ya Rasulullah. Seeking God's forgiveness. God is the one who is going to forgive. But the gate, the road, the path is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Surah Al-Munafiqoon, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْ يَسْتَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لَوَّوْ رُؤُوسَهُمْ وَرَأَيْتَهُمْ يَصُدُّونَ وَهُمْ مُسْتَكْبِرُونَ If they are told, come to the Prophet, he will seek forgiveness for you from God. They decline. لَوَّوْ رُؤُوسَهُمْ They turn their face out of arrogance and a pride. وَهُمْ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ They refuse the munafiqeen, they refuse the shafa'ah. Of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They refuse. The children of Ya'qub Alayhi Salam, when they committed the crime against their brother Yusuf, then they went to the father. They went to him. Rather than going straight to the God, to God, they went to the father because the father is the gate, the entrance to God. The entrance to God. Stahfir lana, help us. You seek forgiveness for us. This is why when we come to Imam Hussein, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Fatima al-Zahra, other Imams, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is what we say to them. We say, oh ya Rasulullah, please plead on my behalf to God. Please, ishfa'li anda rabbik. Ishfa'li, intercede. Plead on my behalf. Seek forgiveness from God on my behalf. That will expedite your case. This is the way. This is the way the Quran says. So we are asking God's help. Bi'ithnillah. Not min dunillah. The mushrikeen, the polytheist. They go to their objects. To their idols. Seeking help without God's permission. Min dunillah. Whereas us, the Muslims, the believers. We go to the Prophet and the Imam. And their shrines too, during their lifetime and after their death, asking their help bi'idhnillah, with God's permission. It's a big difference. Big difference between bi'idhnillah, with God's blessings and, 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 and permission, or 
min dunillah, without God's permission. Big difference. One of them represents monotheism, bi'idhnillah, monotheism, min dunillah, polytheism, shirk. This is the difference. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asri inna al-insana lafi khusrin illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli baytih al-tayyibin al-tahirin. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين أحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهما السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والإمام الخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما ذلكم الشيطان يخوف أولياءه فلا تخافوهم وخافون إن كنتم مؤمنين. Many people suffer from the element of fear, anxiety, and apprehension in their life, especially after these two and a half years of COVID-19. This bala, this affliction really affected the psyche of many of the people, the majority of the people of the world. The subject of fear, khawf, has been mentioned in the Quran, addressed in the Quran in so many chapters, so many chapters. Among them, when God said to Musa and Harun, قَالَ لَا تَخَافَ Do not fear. إِنَّنِي مَعَكُمَا أَسْمَعُ وَأَرَى When you go to Pharaoh, don't fear. Be confident. Be brave. I am with you. I'm not leaving you alone. I'm with you. إِنَّنِي مَعَكُمَا أَسْمَعُ I can hear and I can see. وَأَرَى in Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter in the Quran, and many other chapters, this phrase came different types, different times. In Surah Al-Baqarah and many other chapters. فَمَنْ تَبِعَهُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ If you follow the guidance, the path of God, neither you should fear nor you should be sad. In another verse, الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ God who fed them against hunger and provided them with peace against fear. قُلْنَا لَا تَخَفْ God says to Musa, قُلْنَا لَا تَخَفْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْأَعْلَى When he faced the sorcerers with their leader Pharaoh, he was worried. Inside him he was worried. He, he, he was about to flee the scene, to flee. God said to him, قُلْنَا لَا تَخَفْ Do not fear. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْأَعْلَى You are victorious. You are superior today. Persevere. Stand your ground. You're going to defeat them. And then God says, إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَهُ It is Satan that induces their, his followers with fear. So the seeds of fear, anxiety, apprehension, Making them worried, always worried. Our biggest enemy today, our biggest enemy is fear. And we have to defeat the fear. If not, 
it's going to compromise our ability to function in this life. Some people are not leaving their homes. They are not even leaving their homes out of fear. They don't do it. They cannot do anything out of fear. It's a very, very, very terrible disease. Very terrible mental and spiritual disease. We have to face it. Otherwise, we cannot function. It will cripple, cripple our ability to think wisely, to make a decision. Some people cannot make a decision because of fear, the element of fear. Fear of failure. Fear of criticism. People are going to criticize them. Fear of sickness. Fear of poverty. Fear of death. And you name it. But then we have to face this. The first solution to combat fear, to defeat and defy fear, is through the dua, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have tried this myself. And if I haven't, I would not tell you to do it. And I was successful. At the time of fear, anxiety, uncertainty, Go inside your room and speak with God and seek his help. He listens. God listens to you. But God, God, his frequency accepts certain tones, not any tone, not any language, not any spirit, certain spirits. When you send a distress call, when you send a distress call, a real call, genuine call, a call that some ships they send when they are sinking. When you are sinking, you send a real distress call. He would listen to that. His frequency would accept your call. He would accept. He would not reject your call. Dua, my friends, dua. Munajat, dua. In the middle of the day, middle of the night, while you are driving, while you are running, while you are sleeping, while you are eating, dua, dua. From a genuine heart. God would not care if it wasn't your prayers, your sincere prayers. And then ta'qibat, after the salat, take some time. Take two minutes, three minutes of your time for ta'qibat. Every salat has ta'qibat. We have a booklet outside. Get your copy when you leave. This booklet is in Arabic and English. These ta'qibat has been translated. Ta'qibatul fajr, dhuhr, asr, maghrib, isha. Each Salat has ta'qibat. Ta'qibat means the follow-up on the salat. Follow-up. Follow-up. And these ta'qibat are narrated by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa By our imams, his family, his household. They are meaningful, full of meaning. Ta'qibat and dua. And sometimes the Holy Quran. Grab your copy of the Holy Quran. Sit somewhere, no distraction. And read a couple of verses of the Quran. This is how you combat fear. God will send peace upon your heart. Only through the remembrance of God. Hearts and souls find peace and tranquility. The second way of combating fear is through what Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam said. Imam Ali said, إِذَا حِبْتَ شَيْئًا فَقَعْ فِيهِ If you fear something, if you fear a person, if you fear an animal, if you fear a cause, if you fear to travel, if you fear to do this, فَقَعْ فِيهِ Go and engage in it. Why? He says, because you have to face your fear. This is the... This is, they call it, psychologists call it, the desensitization therapy. That you have to face what you fear. You fear an animal. You have to establish a relationship with that animal. Slowly, slowly. Gradual relationship. Gradual relationship with that animal that you fear. Then a day comes that you are a friend of that animal. You are afraid of a place. Go to that place. Amir al muminin says, فَإِنَّ شِدَّةَ تَوَقِّيهِ أَعْظَمُ مِمَّا تَخَافُ مِنْهِ In reality, that thing that you are fearing is not fearful. But because there is a barrier inside your heart, 
inside your mind. Your mind says, don't go. Defy your mind. Defy it. Face your fear. Challenge it. And go and do it. Practice it. Engage in it. You will find it easy. Your fear was not reasonable. Face. Face your fear. Defy it. We have to defy this element. Because we know there is a protector there. There is a protector. There is a protector. Sometimes a child is left in a park, but his mother is watching him. The child sometimes turns right and left. He does not see his mother. He starts to cry. But his mother is there. She doesn't leave him. Allah does not leave us. Allah is there. Inani ma'akuma asma'u wa ara. Be strong. Be confident. There is a Lord who is protecting you, who has been protecting you since before your birth. When your mother was carrying you in your belly, in her belly, he was protecting you. Until the moment comes. Until the moment comes, Imam Ali says, then God removes the protection, we die. Only one time he removes the protection. And then we die. Whenever he wants to summon us back to him. And the third element where we can face and defeat fear and khawf is to have good relationship with good friends, inspirational friends, friends that, friends who empower you, inspire you, who counsel you. We need in our life, we need to speak to some people, especially if those people are wise, they have far sightedness, they are faithful. They are genuine, they are honest. Those people are going to help you. At the time of fear, call those people. Have some consultation, some conversation with those people. Alladina Amanu, they connect you to God. They bring you peace. They induce you with peace. They say something beautiful that brings peace to your heart. So we have to combat fear. We should not be the victims. We cannot be victims of fear. If we allow it to take over, our life is destroyed, my friends. Our life is destroyed. Teach your children to face their fear and be brave because there is God who is seeing and who is watching. Mu'mineen, before we conclude, uh, our youth, they have a, a, a summer retreat, June 17th through June 19th in Big Bear. So, but they need your help. They need your donation to sustain their camp, summer camp. So please, if you'd like to donate, uh, Hajj Ali Muhammad Iniya is sitting here. So please reach out to him or Hajj Samir Amiri or Hajj Karim al Ta'i and others, inshallah. Tomorrow, the youth, they have a, a hike at 4 p.m., inshallah, Saturday, 4 p.m. in Irvine. And... We also have to remember a hero who died two days ago in Palestine, Shirin Abu Aqla, the Palestinian-American reporter and journalist who was killed by the Israeli army. Today she was buried in Jerusalem and the Israeli army was attacking her funeral and her janazah. An army who considers itself to be the strongest army in the Middle East or in the world is fearful of janazah, someone who's dead. Fearful of janazah. He sends its soldiers to attack, to attack a janazah of someone that they killed two days ago. This is the democracy in Israel, in Israel. And this democracy is supported by the White House, by the American government. We salute the soul of Shirin Abu Aqla. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, to embrace her with his forgiveness and his mercy and to bestow perseverance and patience on her family inshallah ta'ala and we have a friend very good friend in our community Hajj Nadim Shrara who is undergoing a brain surgery very critical surgery just today right now so please raise your hand let's pray for him and for those who are having surgeries today and those who are sick those who are recovering let's pray for them بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 
أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء يا الله من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية المرضى المنظورين اللهم ألبسهم ثوب الصحة والعافية عاجلا وعجل في فرج إمامنا وقائدنا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة